Hey everyone. So I just got done getting interviewed um, for a summit by a good friend of mine, Taper Smith. He's releasing a documentary called A Better Way, and you probably saw me post about it. I got interviewed before um, for the actual documentary, but he's putting together a summit for it. So we just got done doing that. So I figured while I had everything set up here at the office, I was going to do a Facebook Live real quick. Um, last week, well, I guess earlier this week because it's Friday, I had a patient consult with me and basically say, look, another doctor had found um, a particular bacteria on a stool sample and so she wanted to know what it meant um, or should she be worried, what should she do, how should she approach this. Uh, so it was a longer discussion than I think she had intended, but mainly because I didn't know if it meant anything or not. It depends on who did the stool sample, how they did it, you know, what technology they used. So I thought it'd be probably a good time to revisit this. I did a stool sample video, oh my gosh, longer ago than I'd like to admit. If you go to YouTube, I think it's actually the very first video I posted on YouTube um, was about proper stool sampling. In fact, the lab that I talk about doing the right kind of stool sample has since been bought out by another lab and you can't even, anyway. So I figured it's time to update that discussion. So here I am. Um, so a proper stool sample should give you information like what's living in there and and how much of it is there and is it likely to be causing a problem and in some cases is it going to be easy to kill off or not right now i'm not going to get into a complete discussion of stool sampling because that's i mean that's probably an hour-long video um but I'm, I'm going to talk about one particular component which is what we discussed with her um was was that test quantitative or qualitative? Now, not getting into her answer and, and that particular lab, but when you do a stool sample, in many cases, the technology is still, um, you, you catch your stool, you send it to the lab. Some poor guy with a master's degree, degree at the lab has to open up the box and process your sample. Um, but they take a Petri dish, you remember those from high school, they have almost like jello in the bottom of the dish, and that jello has nutrients in it and stuff. And so they take a little bit of the stool and they, they rub it on that dish, put the lid on, put it in an incubator, and they grow it. And then a few days later, they pull it out and they see what grows on there. And, and they identify the, the different colonies of, of whatever's growing, we'll call it bacteria at this point, but it could be fungal. Um, and then they issue a report that says that, you know, you grew E. coli, and sometimes they'll even attempt to put a quantitative number on it, like a plus two or a plus three. Usually zero to plus four uh, is the scale that they'll use. And so you get this test back and you say, oh my gosh, I grew this nasty bacteria at plus four. I, I got to go get treated for this. But the Petri dish grew it at plus four. That doesn't necessarily mean it was growing that robustly inside you. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Um, hey, Kevin, how are you? It's good to talk to you. Um, so, so sometimes it, it grows big on, uh, on the Petri dish because it likes the nutrients in that Petri dish or it likes the, the temperature in the incubator or something like that, but it wasn't really that dominant in you. Perhaps, you know, maybe in you it was just kind of hiding in the background or something else was dominant over it, but get it in the Petri dish, that dominant thing doesn't like that nutrient mix, but this this stuff does. So you lose all that quantitative information. In many cases, you lose a fair amount of the stool sample. When you put something on a Petri dish, it's exposed to oxygen. It's in an aerobic environment now because the air we breathe has oxygen. But inside the intestinal tract, it might not have been. There are many bacteria in there that are what we call anaerobic. They don't like oxygen. And there's not much oxygen in there, so that works out well. And there are some estimates that say that when you produce a stool sample and put it on a Petri dish, you've just lost 70 or 80% of the bacteria because they're anaerobic. You're only growing the aerobic bacteria. If you want to grow a fungus, you've got to have a different jello, they call it auger, in the bottom of the Petri dish. And, and so you lose a lot of that quantitative data. How relevant is this finding? So in a standard stool sample, if something grows, it was in the stool. That that's a given but that's about all you know if it didn't grow doesn't mean it wasn't in the stool and if it grew a lot or grew just a little you can't extrapolate that back to what was it doing inside the patient or inside the intestines 
So when a doctor says, oh, you, your stool sample said you have E. coli or something. Um, okay, it was in there. There is good E. coli and bad E. coli. And a lot of the bad E. coli at a low enough level really is irrelevant. Um, and that particular method of doing stool samples doesn't tell you whether you had a, a, um, a meaningful amount of E. coli in the intestines. It just tells you that they were able to grow a lot of it in the Petri dish. Um, so I think she was a little bit disappointed. I don't know, maybe she wasn't. But, but that's why doctors don't do a lot of stool samples. They know from prior history that you get the results back and then you have to say, well, what do I do with it? Well, I don't know, because I don't know how relevant it is. If you use a lab that caters to functional medicine doctors, we are looking for a different level of information when we do a stool sample. Um, the one I use is called GI MAP. That's the name of the test. Um, and it's from a, a company called Diagnostic Solutions. But the GI MAP test gives true quantitative information. They use a PCR method and it's called qPCR, which is quantitative PCR. They will actually tell you per gram of stool for a particular bacteria, you had, you know, 7.8 times 10 to the seventh number of cells of that bacteria per gram of stool. Now I get to know whether or not that's relevant, right? They're not growing it. You get aerobic and anaerobic. You get bacteria, virus, parasite, um, worms, protozoa, and they even tell you some stuff about digestive function. Is the, is the pancreas doing enough to help you digest, digest your food? Um, are you inflamed? They do a calprotectin test. They look for occult blood in the stool. Um, how well are you digesting your fats? Is the gallbladder working? You get all that kind of information and it's a much more relevant test. Then the patient can know what's going on. They can shop that test around to different, you know, various different GIs and functional medicine doctors and get some options on how to handle whatever it is or do the results match their symptoms, you know, all of that. But that's a much more relevant way of doing a stool sample then simply smearing it on a petri dish and seeing what grows, right? There are significant issues with how to interpret that. So my apologies to the people at the lab that have become very good at smearing things on petri dishes. They, they'll give you an accurate accounting of what's on the petri dish. It's just the relevance of that that becomes questionable, okay? So sorry if you're eating lunch and we're talking poop. I realize this is not too far from lunchtime. But I wanted to throw that out there. If you have more questions about stool samples, certainly, you know, stick something in the notes on this um, and, and I'll do another one that's more responsive to that. Um, but just know that there are, there are relevant or, or usable stool samples out there. And then there are stool samples that really probably aren't worth the trouble um, to do. Okay, so that's it. Hope you have a great day. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, uh, give me a shout. Just write something on here or call the office and uh, we'll get you taken care of. Otherwise, hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you on the next video.